77 WABC, the new Bernie and Sid in the morning. It's crazy nuts taunt the kids before the guy walked up and started banging the drum and adding to the chaos. Low lives. They're animals. That's right. We called you low lives and animals. You want to take it outside Madison Square Garden? Bernie and I are outside 11 o'clock getting our salads. Talk that smack to us. We will beat your ass in. Bernie and Sid in the morning. Weekday morning, 6 to 10. Now on Echo Devices. 77. WABC. 77 WABC. One, three, one, two, three, one. Sin Sports Sunday. Every Sunday. From the NJDiet.com studios. 77 WABC New York. Accumulus Station. This is Sin Sports Sunday. Driven by Ramsey Mazda. Around the country. Around New York. The stories you're talking about. The stats you need. Brady right under center turns. Gets to Burkhead. Hole on the left side. He's in. Burkhead is in for the touchdown. And with an overtime touchdown run by Rex Burkhead, the dynasty continues for the New England Patriots. They're going to their third straight Super Bowl. The edge you need. Try to execute the plays the way that they've been presented, but there's always an element of adjusting or modify your technique or the way you're doing it based on a certain look or the way the player plays the play and how it unfolds after the snap. These are the moments you won't forget. 57 yarder for the Super Bowl. Ball put down. Right footed kick is up. End over Rand arching up and it is gone. He got it. The Rams win. The Rams are going to the Super Bowl. This is Sid Sports Sunday, driven by Ramsey Mazda on 77 WABC. A lot of respect for them. They've been doing it as consistently as any organization in the history of this league. They're a team that you're always watching the way they do things, and, and you just have so much respect for the way that they've operated over the last handful of years. So it's going to be a great challenge, uh, something that we'll get started on. Now, Sid Rosenberg. And here we are on this Sunday morning, one week before Super Bowl 53 in Atlanta, Georgia. Coming to you, as we always do, from these legendary 77 WABC studios, literally 17 floors above Madison Square Garden for this Sid Sports Sunday. Uh, one that will be here for this week, uh, maybe not next week, we, maybe in Atlanta, Georgia. We'll see. I'm thinking about actually stretching my trip a couple of days, but uh, folks that are fans of this show, and of course, the best morning show in New York City, you can scream all you want about Boomer and Geo at WFAN. That show stinks. Uh, they miss Craig Carton desperately. Don't even come to me about WOR, that mess. Best morning show in New York City is Bernie and Sid in the morning, right here at 77 WABC. And we're going to do something this week that's never been done at WABC. Yes, Many years ago, in fact, one year before I came here, Geraldo Rivera did cover the Super Bowl for the midday show. But the difference was that Super Bowl, exactly five years ago, Super Bowl 48, was at the Sheraton Hotel in New York City. Why are my ears, why is it becoming uh, less loud in my ears? I don't care if I bang the, the, uh, the, 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 the sound is distorted. I want it as loud as possible. All right, Isaiah, thank you. Anyway, Gerardo did cover that Super Bowl, thank you, from New York City. But no one's ever gone on the road. Well, we are. After Wednesday's morning show, Bernie, myself, our assistant program director, Matt Dahl, our fearless leader, Chad Lopez, and, of course, the great producer board up of Bernie and Sid, Matt Meany, on our way to Atlanta. And we will bring you live shows from Radio Row, Sheraton Hotel, Atlanta, Georgia, the site of Super Bowl 53, on Thursday and Friday morning, and that since Sports Sunday comes to you Saturday and Sunday from the same place. So we are diving in. You heard the highlights there. The Pats are on their way back. It's just, it's really unbelievable. We spent the whole season talking about the Kansas City Chiefs, Pat Mahomes. It was pretty good last week, too, when you consider the fact the Patriots somehow shut this kid out in the first half. But don't forget, Mahomes and the Chiefs put up 31 on the Pats in the second half. And I think most of us believe that if the rule was changed and Kansas City got the football in overtime after New England, they still may be playing that game today. A week later, they still. Because I think Brady scores every time. 
and Mahomes scores every time. And that did bring up a certain issue. I mean, look, the whole week was mired by controversy. Rams getting in the blown call on the Saints, uh, the Rams defensive back, and the Pats. There were two things at play here. One is the roughing on Tom Brady, which never happened. And then, of course, the overtime rule. But are you okay with the fact that Brady gets the football, does what he does? I know Kansas City had the chance defensively to stop New England, but well, so what? I mean, I mean, the Chiefs, I should say the Patriots, never stopped Kansas City's offense in the second half. I actually would consider changing that rule for the playoffs, and we're going to talk to the Hall of Fame coach, Tony Dungy, about that next hour. I don't think he agrees. He agrees your defense should stop the opposing offense. And that's fine. And so Brady gets the win, 37-31. He's magnificent again. But here we were a couple of weeks ago talking about the Chiefs, the Chargers. At one point, Pittsburgh was 7-2-1. and one. And I remember, Gunsy, first show we did from that bar in Bayside that morning. We had Sean Salisbury on, the former NFL quarterback. He does a show, his own show in Houston. And I said, let me ask you something. He had a lot of talk about the Chiefs and the Chargers and the Steelers, are we making a mistake by putting the Pats to sleep? And he said, yeah, we are, Sid, but we still did it, right? Two weeks ago, a lot of us thought the Chargers and Phil Rivers would walk into Foxborough and beat the Pats. That was 35-7 New England at the half. And last week, come on, he was going to go to Kansas City, that vaunted offense, and a pretty good defense in Arrowhead, and win that game, and he did. He's now going to his ninth Super Bowl, 11th for the Patriot organization. Don't forget, they lost two before Brady, got blown out by the Bears, 46-10. That was the Tony East and Steve Grogan teams. And then after that, Drew Bledsoe took the Pats to the Super Bowl. They got beat by the Packers, Brett Favre. Of course, that was the day that Desmond Howard won the Super Bowl MVP. That was Bill Parcells' team. But since then, nine times for Brady. Got a record of five and three. Did lose the last one. Giants beat him twice. Third consecutive year. But I saw something this morning that was very interesting. And I want your thoughts on this. Of course, today, we're going to give you guys, the fans out there, a chance to make this as close as we can to a WFAN show. I'm better than what's on there right now anyway. So you may as well call me. 1-800-848-WABC. 1-800-848-9222. You look at the all-time great Boston sports figures. You always start with Ted Williams, baseball, Bill Russell, basketball. I don't care if you go to Carl Yastrzemski, Larry Bird, Bobby Orr, the great hockey player, David Ortiz. I don't care where you go. Is it crazy? Again, those names, Ted Williams, Yaz, Orr, Russell. Is it crazy? Win or lose a week from today to deem Tom Brady the greatest Boston athlete ever. Where's Joe Abood when I need him? <laughs> He's a Red Sox fan first and Pats, but he may get cringe. He may cringe a bit when I say Brady ahead of Ted Williams and Yaz and those guys, but I think he's there. But it's only worthy of a discussion. Now, if he wins next week, that'll be win number six for Brady in nine tries. If he loses, then you got to go, wait a second. He's five and four in the big games, and now he's suffered consecutive losses, even though... Hard to blame Tom Brady for losing last year. The Pats scored plenty of points. Nick Foles and the Eagles just scored more. It's your bottom line. So he's back. The Pats are back. And, um, well, it's the first time he'll play the Rams since it all started. Believe it or not, folks, next Sunday will be February 3rd. Well, 17 years ago, on February 3rd, 2002, that was Tom Brady's first Super Bowl. You may remember the tuck uh, rule uh, game against the Raiders that he won, the very controversial call. Charles Woodson to this day still very upset. And they move on to the Super Bowl, which took place in New Orleans. And the Rams took on the Patriots, a Ram team that two years before that won the Super Bowl behind Dick Vermeil, Kurt Warner, Marshall Falk, all those great players. They beat the Tennessee Titans. In an amazing Super Bowl where Mike Mike A. Jones tackled Tennessee wide receiver Kevin Dyson inside the one as regulation expired. So the Rams get the win 23-16. They don't go back the following season. The Giants did, actually. 
and they got blown out by the Baltimore Ravens, that awful Kerry Collins Super Bowl. But two years later, with a different coach, the Rams did get back. Mike Martz, who went to the Rams as a quarterback coach, was Dick Vermeil's offensive coordinator. He was the head coach for the Ram team in Super Bowl 36, trying to win their second Super Bowl in three years. And we all know it didn't go great. They turned the football over. In fact, Ty Law picked off Kurt Warner, returned it, returned it, I should say, 47 yards for a touchdown. I think the Rams turned it over three times that day. And Brady, in his first Super Bowl, played it very clean. Here's with some of the names, like David Patton caught a touchdown that day. Troy Brown had a big catch in the eventual game-winning drive that resulted in a 48-yard field goal by Adam Vinatieri. J.R. Redmond was the running back. Listen to these names for a second, folks. You want to compare Tom Brady to Montana, Storback, Bradshaw, Unitas. Those guys had Hall of Famers everywhere. Listen to the names I'm giving you. J.R. Redmond, David Patton, Jermaine Wiggins, Troy Brown, and he beat the Rams that first game. A Ram team which most people thought was better than the 99 team that won. In fact... Just on this show last week, we had the chance to talk to all-time great Ram wide receiver Isaac Bruce, who this year is a Hall of Fame finalist, about that specific Super Bowl. This was before the Pats and Rams both won last week. Now they'll do it again. 17 years later, here's what Isaac Bruce said about Super Bowl 36. We all know the story. Mike A. Jones tackled Kevin Dyson inside the one. God rest his soul. Steve McNair walks off a loser. You get the big touchdown in the fourth quarter that wins the game. And you get back two years later uh, with some uh, say was even a better team than the 99 team. And you lose the Super Bowl this time around. And the guy that was an assistant, first a quarterback coach, then offensive coordinator for Vermeil, Mike Martz, is your head coach. And I know you're giggling, Isaac, but to this day, everybody blames Mike Martz for the loss. They're like, hey, Mike, do you need to remind you? Hand the football once or twice to Marshall. <laughs> you know what? There, there was a lot of blame to go around to all of us, man. We, we didn't play well, turned the football over. Not only blame, but, you know, some finger pointing as far as across the field, man. You know, with the stories coming out after the Super Bowl, Spygate and things of that nature. So it was a lot to go around, man. It was a game that um, I felt like we should have won. We were a 14-point favorite. You mentioned that the 2001 team was better than the 1999 team. It was from a standpoint of defense because that year we picked up three defensive first-rounders who I thought had helped us to get to that point. And just unfortunately, man, we didn't pull it off, man. I didn't think we were as focused as we should have been. Uh, there's Isaac Bruce, again, a Hall of Fame finalist, one of the uh, the many that will be announced before Super Bowl 53. So there it is. The Rams are back in, taking on the Pats, 17 years to the day that Brady got his first win. And they get in with a bunch of controversy uh, all over that game. We all know, of course, we all know that Nikel Roby Coleman, the Rams defensive back, was guilty of not one, not two, but three fouls on one play. Three fouls. He was in the receiver's face, so he couldn't catch the football. He blasted the wide receiver before he can catch the football. That's interference. And there was also a helmet-to-helmet -helmet hit, which should have been a roughing penalty. Not one, but three fouls on one play. And amazingly, amazingly, the refs didn't call anything. I don't know how that happened, but it did. It's so bad, by the way, that believe it or not, you know that this guy Coleman was actually fined by the NFL $27,000 yesterday? So they don't call the penalty. The Saints lose the game, and a week later they foul. They actually fine the guy for, a, for an illegal hit. I mean, if you're the NFL, you just don't do anything. You leave it alone. How do you find the guy a week later? Because you had a lot of folks this week saying, hey, Roger Goodell, the commissioner of the NFL, has the power... To play the game over. Let's say you don't want to do that. Roger Goodell has the power to give the Saints a first down right there, put the two minutes back on the clock, and finish the game. Roger Goodell has all the power in the world, more than Donald Trump. And we all know that Donald Trump now is second to Nancy Pelosi because he caved like a cheap suit. All right, that's our guy, Donald Trump, Mr. Tough Guy. We love him. He's the man. And uh, when push came to shove, Nancy Pelosi kicked his ass. Bernie won't admit that tomorrow morning, but I will. 
But Goodell's got more power than both of them. Go back there, put two minutes on the clock, give the Saints a first down and whatever it was, 10-yard line, first and goal, and let's take it from there. Rams won't see the football again. Now, look, Sean Payton made some mistakes, too. He should have run the football, no doubt about it. What are you doing throwing the ball on first down? So you can take Payton to task, but it doesn't mean anything. Because the truth is, should have been a first down where the Saints would have kicked the field goal. The Rams would have gotten the football back down by three with four seconds left. Game over. Drew Brees gets back to his second Super Bowl instead of Jared Goff. They fined this guy yesterday, if you didn't know that, for an illegal hit, $27,000. So unfortunately, this wonderful Super Bowl, the Rams, their fourth Super Bowl, but their first in Los Angeles since Super Bowl fourteen. When they lost to the Bradshaw and the Steelers, 31-19. At the time, that was the Steelers' fourth Super Bowl win. That amazing game with Ray Malavese and Vince Ferragamo actually led the Steelers in the fourth quarter. First time in Los Angeles since then. Of course, they got back in St. Louis in 34 and 36. And Brady and the Pats, who go back every single year. And that's what we've got. Like it or not, controversy-laden Saints fans, you talk about frivolous lawsuits. My wife's an attorney. <laughs> and I'm best friends with everybody from Jose Baez to Joe Tacopina to Arthur Idala. I know about frivolous lawsuits. I've had a few filed against me. Got one right now, to be honest. <laughs> to be completely honest. But the, um, the Saints fans suing, that's a bit ridiculous. <laughs> I know you're butthurt. Believe me, if, I, if it was my Giants, I'd be pissed. I wouldn't be as pissed as the Lions linebacker who, for some reason, after not paying his cab, elected to knock out a sergeant at a precinct in Queens yesterday. That was, I don't know what he was thinking there. That's the headline of today's paper. Some second string linebacker who no one's ever heard of, who plays for the Lions, who got his first sack of the season this weekend, and it was against a cop. (laughs) Not the one you really want to get. So anyway, the phones are wide open, 1-800-848-WABC, 1-800-848-9222. We've set the scene a week from today, Super Bowl 53, the Pats, and of course the Rams. When we get back, we'll hit the phones, plus a majestic week for the Yanks. The all-time best ever gets in and gets 100% of the vote. The other guy, Yankee? Oriole? Neither? All that coming up next. On Sid Sports Sunday. 77 WABC. You gotta be ready to go. Breakfast in bed with Sid. A dream come true. Sid Sports Sunday. Driven by Ramsey Mazda every Sunday. Man, oh man, they can't stop us. 77 WABC. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are uh, baseball fans uh, all, all over the world. You are the best, but you guys, New Yorkers, you guys are number one. You guys are, you guys are something special. You know, even, though, even though when you guys boo me, when I blow the games and all that stuff, but I, I, I love you guys, okay? So... <laughs> There he is, Mariano Rivera. We did the football. We'll do some baseball here quickly. Then we'll get to the phones. Again, 1-800-848-WABC, 1-800-848-9222. And becomes the only unanimous selection, deservedly so, 100%. You know, 652 saves, 50 better than Trevor Hoffman at number two. You know all this stuff, right? 1999 World Series MVP, the rematch against the Braves. He was spectacular. One win and two saves. And the five wins for the Yanks that he appeared in in World Series, he recorded the last out four times, including the Yankees' last World Series win back in 2009. He did not in the first because he was the setup guy for John Wetland. That story's gone well, huh, John Wetland? (laughs) But uh, Mariano, it's gone well. Do you know all the, all the stats, his postseason numbers through the roof? You know, one of the questions that was asked to me this week, along with, is Tom Brady the greatest Boston athlete of all time? When Derek Jeter is up next year, folks, Derek Jeter next year for the Hall of Fame, will he be the second person and second consecutive Yankee? 
to get 100%. And I don't think so. Only because there's no argument whether or not Mariano Rivera is the best in the history of the game. For example, Lee Smith got in this year. He and Harold Baines were the Today Committee put him in. Lee Smith, a million saves for the Cubs, like a million. Trevor Hopman's got a million, Bruce Suter, John Franco. But there's no, there's no argument whether or not Mariano Rivera is the best ever at that position. Jeter, of course, there is. You can make a very good argument. He barely makes the top five greatest shortstops of all time. So for me, for the Sid Rosenberg criteria, that's why I don't think Derek, although clutch and all that stuff, we know, will get 100%. Mariano should get it. Like, I believe there's a couple of football players. Lawrence Taylor is the greatest defensive player of all time. That's it. Jerry Rice is the greatest wide receiver of all time. That's it. Jim Brown, I don't know, Emmett Smith bands and Walter Payton bands may not want to hear this. He's the greatest running back of all time. That's it. And maybe, maybe we're at the point where Tom Brady is the greatest quarterback of all time. And that's it. Maybe. So in that criteria, Rivera gets 100%. Derek Jeter does not. Now, the other guy to get in, uh, Mike Mussina. Mussina had some great years in Baltimore, 10 years with the Orioles. Then he spent eight years with the Yankees. The majority of his wins came in Baltimore. 147 wins as an Oriole, 123 as a Yankee. But, but, his only 20-win season came as a Yankee. His very last year in the majors, 2008. He was a, an integral part of the Yankee pitching staff that got the Yanks to the World Series twice. Albeit both losses, he never won one. Yankees losing to Arizona in 2001 and the Marlins in 2003. So he enjoyed great success here in New York, right? He pitched in bigger games. So yes, he won 24 less as a Yankee than an Oriole. But if I really break it down, I'd put him in as a Yank. But that's tough for Mike to say, right? Because he cut it with the Orioles. He started there. By the time he got to the Yankees in 2001, he was a superstar. So this was the dilemma that Mike Mussina faced this week. Guns? Uh, t- I, I, I won't be able to choose how that's going to be. I mean, I, I started my career in Baltimore and had, and had 10 seasons and, and, and had some success there. And I went to New York and had eight more seasons and had some success there. And I, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't be able to, to, to do this without, without one place or the other. So, I, I mean, I, I, I'm proud of playing for both organizations. I'm, I'm glad that I had the opportunity to play for both organizations, but I couldn't sit here and choose one over the other. So he goes in with no logo on his plaque, on his cap, no logo. He's one of two guys this year, believe it or not. The late, great, God rest his soul, Roy Halladay. I say God rest his soul, but he's an idiot. God, you know, stop flying airplanes. Did Thurman Munson not teach you a lesson? This guy was in the prime of his life. He had just retired. Millions in the bank. He knew the Hall of Fame was coming. Beautiful family, and he crashes his plane somewhere in Florida. He's long dead. So now his wife is making decisions. And we know that Roy had a great career in both Toronto with the Blue Jays and Philadelphia with the Phillies. So he's doing the same thing as Mucina. No logo on the cap, no logo on the plaque. Edgar Martinez, we know, Mariners. Mariano Rivera, Yankees. Harold Baines, White Sox. Lee Smith, Cubs. But Halliday and Mucina, they're going to go in with no logo. So there you have it, right? You're all set up. You got the football. You got the baseball. Don't forget, Danny B will be here next hour making picks. Ton of prop bets on the Super Bowl. Hall of Fame coach Tony Dungy will join us next hour. And coming up in about 15 minutes, the ultimate Super Bowl getaway package. All you need is a half a million dollars. Here's Bob. He's in Happy Valley, Pennsylvania, the home of the Nittany Lions. He's on line one. Good morning, Bob. You got that right, Sidney. You're a great guy. Great Thank job. You. Thank you. As usual. Thank you. Hey, two points about the NFL officiating. Uh, I didn't realize it was going to come to this. My question is that no one ever spoke about how many flags did the officials ever throw, and it affects the game, and then they go, they huddle, and they say, 
there is no penalty on the play. Well, what's that all about? I don't know. And that does bring up the question, Bob, which is something I put on my Twitter account, at Sid Rosenberg, this week. There were three polls I put up. Don't forget, last Monday was Martin Luther King Day, so I was off. I had nothing to do. So I was putting up polls all day. Should we change the overtime rule that the Pats scored on one possession? Chiefs never see the ball. Second yes, one was, did. was this Bill Belichick's best coaching job ever with the Pats? And to your point, Bob, the third poll I put up was... If there's no penalty call, but everybody in the arena knows it, whether the referees huddle or not, should we go to instant replay? Because if they did, Bob, look at that play just once, they may have thrown three flags on that guy. That's correct. Yes. And I have one more point for you, Sid. Yes. Here's another good one. Uh, when, when, the, uh, when the players go and they go helmet to helmet. They don't intend to do that. I played football. They, don't, they do not intend to go helmet, but they, it happens, just like grabbing a face mask. They didn't intend to do that, but it happened. So they, they're accused of targeting. What happens? The replays show it. The referee says, you're out of the game for targeting. They watch the cameras, watch the guy go down the tunnel. I've got an idea. How about this? When the referee, such as this pass game, made a bad call, and... He is now accountable for that bad call. Why don't they say referee number 62? <laughs> He's out of the game. That would be great. Wouldn't that be... And now we have five other referees waiting on the sidelines to take his place. How now, would that, that be? That would be great. You know, listen, I, I don't blame one referee. Thank you for the call, Bob. When you've got a team out there, I feel like they're all responsible, right? Uh, one of those guys had to see it, so there's not one guy to blame. Uh, but that whole referee crew was going to be in trouble here. There's no question about it. I mean, they legitimately, you know, we argue about bad calls all the time, and some are more egregious and more flagrant than others. There's no question about it. But they legitimately, 100%, cost a team. That team started training camp with big bugs in Louisiana and heat and ass sweat and swamp ass and stink a long time ago with the one goal get to Atlanta, and they were there. And these referees took it away. Here's uh, one of the great fans of the Bernie and Sid in the morning show and Sid Sports Sunday. We love this guy. Line two, Joe Salamino. Good morning, Joe. Good morning, Sid. You know, that last comment about New Orleans getting ready to go to the uh, season. Thank God I ate breakfast a couple of hours ago. <laughs> <laughs> hey, just a reminder, 27 years ago today, Super Bowl 25, Giants 20, Bills 19. That was today, huh? Yeah, 27 uh, years ago today. I was now, in those stands. I was there for that. I, you know, story quickly, Joe, before you get to your point, I sure. actually drove down to Orlando days before with my dad, Harvey, and a couple of his work buddies, and we partied Pleasure Island the night before. I ended up getting hammered. That's no surprise. <laughs> but, but I ended up getting into a fight with a bunch of Buffalo Bills fans. And it's ironic because they said to me, because the week before the Giants beat the 49ers 15 to 13 to advance to the Super Bowl on five Matt Barr field goals. So uh, on the way out, the last thing one of these Buffalo tough guys said to me was, how many field goals are you going to need tomorrow? And I remember in my drunken stupor, I said, just one more. And it wasn't a giant made field goal, but ironically, a Scott Norwood missed field goal for the Bills that got us the Super Bowl win. So there you have it. And I'll tell you, you know, uh, I do have some other talking points. I hope you let me get to a few of them. But regarding that Super Bowl, remember the first two Super Bowls with the Giants, they had uh, half-ending drives in the first half, and then they got the ball in the second half. So both games, both Denver and Buffalo, their offense never saw the ball for, for like 20 minutes of game time and – you know, about an hour to an hour and a half in real time, which allowed the Giants' defense, and that 86 team was a great one, really allowed the Giants' defense to rest. Yep. Now, with regard to Mariano Rivera, granted a lot of players who maybe deserve to be unanimously voted into the Hall of Fame, Griffey, your guy, Siva, Ruth yep. Cobb, etc. But in this era, was there another player who embodied what team sports was all about? He went out every well, day. Well, Jeter, Jeter did. But yeah. And, and, and you know, that's my next point. Jeta, I'm a lifelong Yankee fan. No, I don't think he goes in unanimously. I think he'll be a top five in terms of percentage. But with regard to Rivera, he went out every day knowing he had one job, entered the game the same way, glove in hand, slow walk, steady jog. 
never intimidated a player or showed up. His intimidation was the cutter. Now, with regard to Trevor Bates, does Roger Goodell step in and suspend this guy oh, yeah. immediately oh, yeah. for striking, striking a New York City police officer? Of course. I mean, he, he, been, they, he broke the law. I mean, if you're forgetting yeah. about of course uh, Goodell's going to step in and this guy's going to get suspended. Who knows what's going to happen to this guy? I mean, again, he's no one ever heard of this guy before yesterday. No. Sixth round pick of the Colts, got cut by Indy, ended up in Detroit. But, and as always, Joe Salamino, terrific phone call. And thanks for all the tweets every single morning and your, your fandom, if that's a word. We do love you. But, yeah, this guy, Trevor Bates, whoever he is, He's about to get in a lot of trouble. Here's another good friend of the Bernie and Sid Show on Sid Sports Sunday. Line 5, it's our friend Lori in Harlem. Good morning, Lori. Good morning there, Sid. Good morning. I Hi. thank you. I didn't know about the fine with the Patriots. Uh, Not well, unbelievable? You know, is that unbelievable? They actually fined the guy, the Rams, uh, $27,000, and yet they still, they still are allowed to play in the Super Bowl a week from today. That really sucks. I'm just going to say it. But here's the deal. I am really not all that excited about this year's Super Bowl. I know Brady's a great player. But it's like Groundhog Day. I think that's the movie where the same team's <laughs> winning. Yeah. Yesterday, Golden State won. It's like the same old teams. I, like, I would have really liked to see a new team in there. I mean, and I know the Saints are great. So it's so like lackluster, the Super Bowl. You know, so, and I really didn't know about that, that fine. Yeah. I like listening to so, you. you so thank you. So, so you don't like, you know, there's a lot of folks who got tired, for example, of Bradshaw and the Steelers. They won four Super Bowls. A lot of folks were tired of Troy Aikman, Emmitt Smith, and Michael Irvin. They won three. And they love the fact that the NFL can take a four-win Falcon team one year, get them yeah. to the Super Bowl the following year. So you don't like the dynasty stuff. You like to be more unpredictable. I like that. It gets the, the team variety. You know, it's like your show. It's like you and Sid, you and Bernie's show. It's you know, it's diversity, it's that variety. I like to see a different team win. Like I said, it's like so predictable. Like every time Golden State wins, yeah. it's probably a ninety percent chance they're going to win. They won yesterday. Oh, won they're going to listen. They're going to win it. Again. That was a great game yesterday, oh. Laurie. As always, thank you for the phone call. They beat the Boston Celtics on the road. Snap the Celtics five game win streak. Uh, they're going to win it again. I know there's been turmoil and Kevin Durant and uh, Cousins hasn't been healthy and, you know, Curry's had his issues, but they're going to win it until, to Lori's point, they're going to win it again because there's just nobody else. I mean, who in the West scares you? When LeBron was healthy, the Lakers were playing well. And in fact, they clobbered Golden State on Christmas Day. That's the last time LeBron played. But do you think, honestly, that Houston... And they can score. James Harden's having an unbelievable season. Or Oklahoma City, maybe, I guess. Westbrook and George. Portland, Utah. Come on. These teams don't scare you. And in the East, I mean, Toronto, they're having a phenomenal season. Houston beat them at home on Friday night. The Sixers, they can't seem to put it together with three major superstars. Embiid, Simmons, and Jimmy Butler. Boston, they're definitely a step back from where they were last year. Nobody's buying Indiana, so they're going to win it again. Michael is in the Bronx, line four. Good morning, Mike. Sydney, shalom. How's everything going? Shalom for you. What's boxed? Great. Hello, hi. Listen, I was, I was wondering, uh, you know, the, the Patriots don't have the same dominance that they had with the other, the other teams that they, they took to the Super Bowl. And it reminds me of the dominance that the Giants had over the entire league going 14 to 2 and beating the Washington Redskins 17 to nothing in Giants Stadium. It was yep. quite a game yep. for, uh, for Giants fans. It was. That was, uh, thank you for the phone call, Michael. That was the NFC Championship game. And in fact, uh, I've got vivid memories of that. I've been to about a thousand football games in my career and that was the coldest one I ever went to. I was freezing and I was actually sitting in the stands, right where Jim Burt, if you remember, short sleeves and all, big number 64, jumped in the stands. I was sitting right there. Giants, as Michael just said, beat the Redskins 17 nothing. That was Jay Schrader. You know, the Redskins had three quarterbacks who went to the Super Bowl and won. Theismann, he went one out of two. Doug Williams won. Mark Rippon won. All under Joe Gibbs. He almost had four. Jay Schrader had a chance to get there, too, but the Giants beat him that day. And then, of course, the Giants went on to have that amazing effort. Phil Simms, specifically, in the win over John Elway in Pasadena. That was the first Giant Super Bowl win. And you're right, the Giants were dominant that year. They, they lost the first game, I think, to Dallas on Monday Night Football. 
Then they won 14 of 15 and, and rode it right to the Super Bowl win. Listen, the history of the Patriots has been they don't win Super Bowls by big margins. I don't believe, in fact, they've ever won a Super Bowl in their five Super Bowl wins by more than like three points. The Carolina game was 32-29. The Ram game was 20-17. to They beat the Eagles by three, I believe, in Jacksonville. So I'll, I'll take a look at that, but I believe that all five Patriot wins under Tom Brady have been by three points or four points or less. Now, the good news is if you want to bet the Pats, the line is only two and a half. So if they win by a field goal, you're going to win. They're not favored. You know, they were huge favorites over the Giants. You got those five final scores, Gunsy? Am I right about that? They've all been by like three points or, or four or less? Hop on here. Give me, the, uh, give me the final scores. All right, here we go. We've got Patriots 32, Carolina 29. Three. Patriots 24, Eagles 21. Three. Uh, Patriots 28, Seahawks 24. Four points, okay. And, and that was the game, by the way, where if the Seahawks give uh, uh, Marshawn Lynch the football from the one, they win that. Go ahead. And then Patriots 34, Falcons 28. So they win by six, and they came back from that 28-3 deficit. So for the most part, they're close games. Always had one six-point win. And the other one was the uh, Patriots 20, St. Louis 17. That's it, three. So there you have it. So my point, uh, I was right. So listen, Super Bowl week is always fun. We actually thought about on the Bernie and Sid show doing some Super Bowl trivia, doing all these crazy things leading up. But I always feel like if you do something like that, you're stealing from my former colleagues and co-workers, the all-time greats, Mike and the Mad Dog. Who, of course, they've done that Super Bowl trivia for many, many, many years. Now, look, I love sports. I've made a career of it. Yes, I've switched a bit now. I do more politics and news and those types of things with Bernard than I do sports outside of this show, which is really strictly sports. I get it. I made that transition down in Florida consciously six years ago. But I still love sports, no question. I watch everything. I know what's going on. But I never get too crazy when it comes to sports. In fact, I never get too crazy about anything. Politics, Trump Clinton, Trump now, news, sports, I mean, I get uh, crazy with the callers every now and then. <laughs> if you listen, you know that. But I don't get too crazy. That's why, for me, Christopher Mad Dog Russo is and always will be the best. Him and Mike were perfect together. As a solo act, Mike is death. I don't give a crap about his ratings and his revenue or his stupid app. He's death. Russo is still very, very entertaining. Because Russo, sports to Russo is the world. That's it. There's nothing else. If his Giants lose a baseball game at 3 in the morning to the Padres, he wants to kill himself. He's like Joe Beningo with the Jets. If you think I'm kidding, during one of his Super Bowl trivia runs on his own show this week on Mad Dog Radio, which I forget what channel it is. I think it used to be 86 on XM Series. Doesn't matter. Mad Dog is still up to his old tricks. We'll take a short break on Sid Sports Sunday. Here's Doggy this week. And man, does he get upset. Welcome. How are you today? How are you doing, doggy? All right, Matt. Obviously, Bill Belichick has won more games than anyone else in Patriots history. Who is second? Can you repeat the question? No, please? I can't, and you don't know the answer. Goodbye. I mean, folks, I have asked it a thousand times. Read the work. Do it. I mean, you want to go to the Super Bowl, but you don't want to do anything for it. Oh, I'll call Russo and I have some further trivia question. Maybe I'll get lucky. You're not going to get lucky. You, I'm going crazy. Matt in Minnesota. Matt. The Rams played their home games at what stadium in their inaugural season? I'll just guess the Coliseum. The Coliseum. Now, now, hold on now. I just told you 10 seconds ago that they started in 1937. You learned today that their training camp is in Ohio. So let me get this straight. That means the Rams could not have started in L.A., correct? Why would they start in L.A. and then train in Plainsville, Ohio? That's the dumbest thing. That is dumb. What they do? They they played in Ohio and their home games are in LA. Is that what they did? Uh, you guys, you gotta pay attention. You're starting to get me pissed off. You gotta pay attention here. Sid Sports Sunday, driven by Ramsey Mazda. One, three, one, two, three. Seventy-seven WABC. Got 
two, three, seven. Eight. Sid Sports Sunday, driven by Ramsey Mazda, each and every Sunday morning, 9 to 11 a.m. Hey, go give it to you. Let's go get it. 77 WABC. <laughs> So I'm getting calls all week long about Super Bowl tickets. We'll get back to the phones here in just a bit. Don't forget Danny B, dbwins.com. He'll make some picks, some Super Bowl prop bets, and all that good stuff next hour. And Hall of Fame football coach Tony Dungy will be here next hour. And the phones will be open late this hour and next hour as well. 1-800-848-WABC, 1-800-848-9222. But I've been getting calls all week about Super Bowl tickets. i got a couple of buddies who are in the business, one being Jimmy Linett. And they seem to range from about 5,500, I don't know, maybe upwards of 20 grand, depending upon where you want to sit, you know. I'm not going to the game. I mean, I'm going to be there. If the Giants were in the game, I'd stay. And I've gone to all the Giants Super Bowls except for one. Uh, I'm not going to the game because not really all that interested in the Pats and or the Rams in terms of a rooting interest. I'd rather come home on Sunday, do this show, have a party maybe at my house and get ready for Bernie and Sid that Monday morning. Plus, that Monday night, I've got a Joseph Abood fashion show. So, But we'll be there, Bernie and Sid Thursday, Bernie and Sid Friday, and I'll be there Saturday. The truth is, the game, if, you, if you've ever been to the Super Bowl, the game is, is a little anticlimactic. The, the week leading up to it is very exciting. Everybody's in town. There's parties every single night, Rolling Stones. In the old days, the Maxim party, the Playboy party, those were the big ones. And I was always invited because... I'm a monster superstar. I never saw Francesca there, ever. Just so you know, he's never had those. Maybe that's why he stayed up here all those years, and I've been fired 30 times. But on a serious note, uh, there are some plans, some packages available that'll blow your mind. Let me give you one right here. God, I love this one. Four tickets to Super Bowl 53 on the 50-yard line. A private jet from wherever you are to Atlanta. In-flight meals catered by celebrity chef Todd English. He'll also handle the grill for the tailgate party at Mercedes-Benz Stadium. A suite at the five-star W Atlanta Hotel. I've stayed there. It's beautiful. Door-to-door chauffeur service from the hotel to the stadium on game day. VIP access to the Sports Illustrated and Rolling Stone Super Bowl parties in Atlanta. And, as if that's not enough... An authentic Super Bowl 36 MVF TriStar helmet. All of that. Now, the good news is you can do it. For a guy like you, Guns, the bad news is it's a half a million dollars. A bit out of your league by maybe 100000 Anyway, uh, Bruce Rosenberg is a guy that's been the CEO of HotelPlanner.com. Now, dating back, I believe, to about 2012. He's working with my guy, Adam Weiss. And uh, this is the package. Let's hear more about it from Cousin Brucey. His name is Bruce Rosenberg. He could be Cousin Brucey. Bruce, good morning, pal. How are you? Hey, man. I'm I'm doing great. Doing great. Now, where are you this morning? Are are you in California? Where are you? Well, I'm in the beautiful city of Las Vegas. Oh, you're in Vegas. God, even better. Are you by, like, Summerland? or Where are you? Uh, No, I'm right in the Strip. Of course. Come on. That's where you're going to hang out. Oh, you're on the Strip. Are you staying at one of the nice hotels right now? I am in Mandalay Bay. Mandalay Bay. And are you uh, placing bets today already for next week's big game? Yes, I am. Of course. That's, what, what, that's why I came here. You know, it's funny. I, I've covered the Super Bowl about 20 times, but I've never, ever been to Vegas on Super Bowl Sunday, which everybody uh, says you, you need to experience that at least once. Right, Bruce? I think it's going to be uh, a very busy day. I would say so. Yeah. Yeah, Oh, yeah, for sure. So tell me this. Sportsbooks will be jammed. I'm sure they will. The sportsbooks will be jammed. Hotelplanner.com. You've been there now for about six, seven years? Yes, sir. And what do you guys do on a daily? Because I know this. Now, I, of course, I'm going to Atlanta. I got a room with the Sheraton because I dealt directly with the National Football League. Got my media credentials, the room, and all that. But for folks who don't have that type of access, very difficult to get a hotel room in Atlanta, even two or three months before the game, right? Well, not really. Okay, so so right now there are definitely rooms available, and uh, the prices are high. Okay, let's face it. If you go to the Super Bowl, right now the prices are high. When you say the prices are high, give me a ballpark figure. You know, two star hotel, three hundred ish. Four okay. four star hotels, four hundred and to five hundred, and then you go on from there. Right. So there, right now, there's definitely inventory, 
Um, but it looks like it's, it's being booked pretty quickly at this moment in time. Now, we did see this in San Francisco last year. There was a, like a rush to buy, to buy rooms, and all of a sudden the bottom fell out, and the hotels came way down like three, four days before the game. So if you want to go, I mean, I think you, you shop day to day. You just look at it. You get to walk in with your price range. They'll say, I'll pay 500 bucks, I'll pay 300 bucks, whatever the number is. And then, you know, just watch the prices. Right. I still think there'll be rooms available. Bruce Rosenberg, HotelPlanner.com. You know, the venue does matter. You mentioned San Jose last year. I lived in Boca Raton for 16 years. I covered a couple of Super Bowls in Miami. And, you know, there was that one rainy game, Colts and Bears, Peyton Manning. But for the most part, it's a, you know, it's temp- temperatures in the 70s. And guys love to golf this time of year. And I was in Atlanta in 99 for the ice storm. And even next week, temperatures in the 40s doesn't seem like as much as I love Buckhead, Atlanta, why do they keep getting Super Bowls? I mean, San Diego, I get it. Miami, I get it. San Jose, Atlanta, 45 and dreary. Why do they keep getting Super Bowls? <clears throat> you know, my opinion is that that stadium is, is gorgeous. That stadium is, is, you know, an experience. So I just think it's the location. Plus, it's a hub, right? So it's easy to fly in. Right. Yep. Well, and I think TSA's back to work, fortunately. Right. <laughs> so that's, that's a good right. Way to go, Nancy Pelosi. Hey, uh, tell me this then. This is, this is an amazing package that Adam's made me aware of. Again, I went over all of it. You can do it again. Half a million dollars. Now, you know, for everyday guys here in New York City listening to this show that bust their ass, they work six days a week, 12 hours oh, yeah. a day to make 60000 yeah. a year. They, they can't imagine somebody's got that type of money. But the truth is, Bruce, they do, and you're going to sell this thing, aren't you? We're, we're doing our best. We're getting some phone calls on it. So uh, we're going back and forth. We, we hope to sell this. But listen, but we still, I think for, for guys that just want to grow the game, and I've gone to the game a few times, I mean, and I've punched for hotels. I've done the same thing. It's just like you watch the rates. You know, on our website, there's a, there's a great map. So you go in, you, you click on the map, and you see all the prices pop up, and then it's, it's so easy to shop. And then you go into the hotel and see what's available. So uh, uh, it's, in New York, it's drivable, right? So, you know, it, it would be a, a fun road trip. That's true. You can drive there. So, okay, so go. Yeah. You see, you get the four tickets right on the 50 yard line, the private jet. Go over the specifics. Yeah, yeah. sure. <laughs> so, you get the four, you four tickets on the 50 yard line, which costs a fortune. And uh, then you have the route trip jet, jet transportation. We get a Gulfstream uh, on hold for us, ready to go. It's a gorgeous jet. And uh, luxury suite at the five star W Atlanta. I've stayed there too. It's very impressive. Um, Todd English is excited about this trip. He's our celebrity chef. He's, he, we talked to him, and like two minutes later, he said, I'll, I'll go. I'll do it. Wow. So uh, it, was, it was easy to get him there. And then uh, door-to-door chauffeur service, of course, because you can't have this package to not have door-to-door chauffeur service. Tailgate party uh, created by Todd English. And then, of course, don't forget the parties. You get the Rolling right. Stones Super Bowl parties and the VIP uh, Sports Illustrated party. Wow. Those are fun. Those are great. No question about it. Hey, my dad is yeah. uh, texting me, the great Harvey Rosenberg. He said, is this the Bruce Rosenberg from the Garden City Hotel? Uh, no. No. Okay. No, I'm, not a, I'm not in that clan. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now you're a West Coast guy. All right, so for folks that, because uh, we got some high rollers, this is New York City, listening to the show every day, this show and Bernie and Sid as well. For folks that uh, want to do this, what is the best way to do it? Just go to the website? Go to hotelplanner.com, and there's a Super Bowl ad on there. You just click on that, and it's called the Big Game Package. All or right. you can... Yeah, and we have an email set up for this, too. It's tim at hotelplanner.com, too. Uh, what is email? Tim? Tim at hotelplanner.com. Tim at hotelplanner.com. Well, listen, it sounds like a fantastic deal. I would advise folks, not just for this amazing package, but even if they just want to get hotel rooms at this late time, they can also find some available stuff on the website as well, right? That's correct. Yep, hotelplanner.com. We definitely have deals. You know, some hotels are definitely discounting. So, you know, listen, the prices are still what they are, but... Uh, there are rooms available, and if you have a ticket or just want to go for the experience, and you're right, I totally agree with you. It's, the game is anticlimactic, so right. all the other stuff around the game, that's, that's worth attending to. All right. Well, listen, good luck in Vegas today. Enjoy the strip. Enjoy the Mandalay Bay, and we'll see you next week in Atlanta. And good luck. It's an amazing package, Bruce. Thank you so much. 
Okay, awesome. Appreciate the time. All right, Pooch Rosenberg. Right. Check him out and this great package and other packages for the Super Bowl. If you want to get in there and you thought about it, yeah, I want to do it, check out the website, hotelplanner.com. Oh, I see my guy Gabe from Riviera Beach on the line, Larry in the Bronx. We're going to get to each and every one of you. Uh, next hour, we'll get to the phone calls. Danny B is going to stop by, dbwins.com, with some advice and some thoughts on the game a week from today. And Hall of Famer, Tony Dungy, he'll be here as well. Hour number two of Sid Sports Sunday, kicking ass one week before Super Bowl 53, right after these short messages. 77 WABC. One, two, three, one, two, three, one. Sid Sports Sunday, every Sunday, on the NJDiet.com studios. 77 WABC New York, Accumulus Station. This is Sid Sports Sunday, driven by Ramsey Mazda, Sid Rosenberg, the stories, the stats, the edge. Third down and ten, Breeze from the gun, takes a snap, goes to the near side, oh, hit early, where's the flag? You don't get one. Early hit on Tommy Lee, Sean Payne is all the way down at the ten, unbelievable no call. Wow, not a flag to be found. Unbelievable. He he, that's the second time. You can't challenge it. I mean, he, he doesn't even look for the ball. The moments. It was simple. They blew the call. They said it should never have not been a call. They said not only was it interference, it was helmet to helmet. The two call. They just they couldn't believe it. This is Sid Sports Sunday, driven by Ramsey Mazda on 77 WABC. Well, I, we wanted to bring the, the Hunt Trophy home here. So um, I think all our players did and all the coaches. And, and that's, a, you know, that's a tough thing. So, you know. Somebody gets in the fact that they get to do it right here is real tough. So, um, but we'll, we're going to get that something we've got. So we just uh, we'll bear down this offseason and make sure we get better. Now, Sid Rosenberg. Back again here, hour number two of Sid Sports Sunday. Once again, 17 floors above Madison Square Garden, the legendary studios of 77 WABC. Exactly one week away from Super Bowl 53. You can catch Bernie and Sid in the morning there, live Thursday and Friday, Radio Row, Sheraton Hotel, the Media Hotel in Atlanta. Sid Sports Sunday next weekend, 17 years to the day, February 2nd, when Tom Brady won his first Super Bowl, beating the Rams 20-17 to in Super Bowl 36. A game, by the way, the Pats led 17-3. to Kurt Warner came back. He ran one in, threw a touchdown to Ricky Prohl to tie the game late. But then Brady took the Pats on a last-minute drive, hitting J.R. Redmond out of the backfield a couple of times. Big completions to Troy Brown and Jermaine Wiggins, setting up the Adam Vinatieri 48-yard field goal attempt. And as Vinatieri's done his whole career, he nailed it. And Brady had his first Super Bowl win. Now he's looking for win number six a week from today against the Rams. They're back for their fourth Super Bowl, their second as the L.A. Rams. First one dates all the way back to Super Bowl fourteen, a loss to Terry Bradshaw and the Pittsburgh Steelers. Phones are open, 1-800-848-WABC, 1-800-848-9220. Hall of Famer Tony Dungy coming up next. He's so good. Folks, he's so good. Played in Super Bowl thirteen. The Steelers win over Dallas, the Jackie Smith game. Great job coaching in Tampa Bay. Coached Peyton Manning and the Colts. Manning's first Super Bowl win that rainy night over the Bears down in Miami. Just an amazing interview. He's coming up right after this. But we do put this time aside for our main man. What an unbelievable season of picks he had on this show. Let me let you guys know, it ain't over. I know football is over. You got the Pro Bowl today. If you bet that, you're a huge degenerate. I've done it. Uh, Super Bowl next week, but it ain't over. Basketball, college basketball, Final Four, baseball. What's better than sitting in City Field during an afternoon, a matinee Met game, and watching the scoreboard of 10 other games? He's got winners in all of them. The website is great, dbwins.com. He is the man, Danny Bianculo. This segment is sponsored by dbwins.com. And he's got his own show here Saturday nights. That's how good he's been on this show, Inside the Numbers. Danny B., what's going on, good buddy? What's going on, my friend? You're like Don King, man. You're Don King me. I feel for, I feel privileged. How did I? Uh, well, that's. Don, you promoted me, man. I like that. <laughs> Don King me, man. Well, somebody's got to promote you. <laughs> oh, touche, touche. 
Hey, uh, Jackie Smith brings back memories. I remember that. He never missed a pass when he was with the Cardinals. Dallas gets him. That still haunts me to this day, that and the catch. Yeah, the catch, too. Uh, he exactly. is, no, he is, you know, you talk about Mike Ditka, Kellen Winslow, uh, Tony Gonzalez, the greatest tight ends in the history of the game. And you know it, Jackie Smith had all those great years in St. Louis with the Cardinals. And by the way, had some good years in Dallas, too. But that drop in that 35-31 loss was devastating. You know what? I had Randy Cross, three-time Super Bowl champ himself, on last night. And uh, it was uh, you know what? You guys should hook up in Atlanta. He's down in Atlanta. He's not going to the Super Bowl either. But it would be nice if you can have him on your show. He's fantastic, Randy Cross. 2015, I get a call from Chris Olivero, who at the time was running CBS. Mark Chernoff's boss, mind you, with the fan. Okay. And uh, they wanted to bring me back to FAM, back to New York. I was in Miami. And he said, um, here's what I want to do. I got an opening down in Atlanta. So we want to fly you to Atlanta, which they did, CBS. Put you up at the W Hotel, which they did. And uh, meet with these guys, Terry Fox, some other guy. And you'll get the job in Atlanta. And then the transition will be smooth. You'll be back in the CBS family to come back to Atlanta. I go, great. So you're talking about, so I get there the, the morning of my interviews. And I see Randy Cross and my buddy Mike Bell and Carl Dukes and a host of others. And the meeting starts with me sitting down in the boardroom with the, with the program director, Terry Fox. The GM, I forget his name. And some promotions person. By the way, all African-American. I'm the only white guy in the room. And the GM looks at me and says to me, Sid Rosenberg, how are you, pal? Good. Hey, let me ask you a question before we go any further. Are you ready? Are you ready to talk, to talk Georgia Bulldog football every day? Are you ready? Are you ready to start your show on a Monday morning with the Georgia Tech rambling wreck? And I'm sitting looking at the guy going, Holy Christ, I'm the wrong guy. <laughs> you, you want me to start my morning show in a major cosmopolitan city talking about SEC football? So I sat there. We went back and forth. As it turned out, the money sucked anyway. Uh, they figured I was not the right guy for the job. There's also a lot of religious people in Atlanta. And I'm quick to curse and talk about sex. So it never worked out. But, but getting back to Randy Cross, he was one of the guys that was... Um, out there for me, trying to get the job. He wanted me there, basically. So, see, no, he's a good man. He's a good egg. See, I like Randy. I've had him on my podcast. I've had him on my show in the past. He, you know what? He likes the Rams. You know, he says the Rams are going to win by eleven points. We're going back and forth. Uh, he says uh, Montana's better than Brady. You can catch a replay of the show last night. It was it awesome. was a great interview. No, he's great. You know, he was actually born in Brooklyn, Randy Cross. Right. And had those great years in San Francisco. Now he's been in Atlanta for many, many years. All right, so this is kind of a down week. You got the Pro Bowl today. As I said, though, the NBA is kicking college basketball. Big games now every day. I know Duke didn't cover against Georgia Tech yesterday. So uh, people checking into dbwins.com, will you be making picks on some of these prop bets, stuff like that? Yeah, for the Super Bowl, yeah, you know what? There's over 400 combinations, right? I think yeah. over 400 ways you can bet the Super Bowl. We'll throw a couple out there. I'll throw out some on the show. I'll release some on your show next Sunday. But, you know, I'm still leaning on the Patriots. I know, New England. I know, before you tell me about the Patriots, it's New England. <laughs> they're they're going to win by – I got them winning by double digits, okay? I got Brady with 450 yards, five touchdowns, one on the ground. Wow. How's wow. that? That's powerful. Why is that? The Ram defense isn't that bad. No, I know. It's, no, listen, all kidding aside, it's going to be a good game. I think Brady walks away with number six. I think he retires. It, you can't beat He's not guys. retiring. He's not retiring. No chance. So? No. Well, maybe, maybe I'm wrong there. He, but he I, said I, a couple of weeks ago he's, gonna, he's 41. He wants to play until he's at least 45. Wow. So then Bernie keeps bringing this up, this idea he's going to walk off it. And no chance. Uh, he'll be back. Bill Belichick will be back. You can bet a billion dollars on that. Trust me. The only guy that will not be back, win or lose, I think that will retire is Gronkowski. Really? The Gronk? He's a yeah. beast. My son's a big fan. He's of the beat up. His body's had enough. He just wants to go out and mosh pit, do Nickelodeon, hang out with young girls, get hammered. He's had enough. You know what? He deserves.
deserves that. You know, after you put your body through that, you, your body gives you a signal. It's time to go. You got to go. It right. is what it is. Now, you reserve the right to change your mind. The game is not, of course, for another week and hours on top of that. So you're saying Pats today, Danny, but you no, reserve not, the right I'm to gonna, change your mind. No, I won't change my mind. No, you won't. Okay. That's cowardly. <laughs> I'm going to stick with the Patriots in a close game, but they do win. They do cover. And maybe you're right, but... I think if he gets to Super Bowl ten, if he goes to ten Super Bowls, that's enough. That's enough. You got to right. stop at that point. Seven rings, ten Super Bowls. You know, Randy will dispute this though, uh, but he feels that Montana is better than Brady. Well, but he's not. I mean, it's silly. Stop. I mean, listen, I know, Montana. I Montana's first Super Bowl win over Cincinnati. Okay. This was pre-Jerry Rice, pre-John Taylor, pre-Roger Craig. In fact, most people can never name his skilled players, but I can because I'm the best. Uh, his wide receivers were guys named uh, Solomon, Freddie Solomon, and Dwight Clark. His tight end was Russ Francis, not Brent Jones. And his running backs were Earl Cooper and Bill Ring. And yet he still beat a very good Kenny Anderson Bengal team to win his first. But after that, he was surrounded by... Roger Craig, Jerry Rice, John Taylor, Tom Rathman, Brent Jones. I mean, give me a break. Uh, this guy, Brady, has won Super Bowls with David Patton, Troy Brown, J.R. Redman. Who are these guys? No, well said. You know, and you can't argue with that. I, you got five rings. You get, I mean, it, the numbers speak for themselves. It's as simple as that. I'm not a fan of either or. You know, I was a Cowboy fan. I was a Starback fan. I was a Talkington fan. Uh, but if I have to pick, yeah, I have to give the edge to Brady. For All sure. right. Well, listen, before we... Uh, I can't come down to Atlanta with you? Come on. You can come. come. On that bus. You can absolutely come. Yeah, really? You got, you got an extra seat on that bus for me? For you? <laughs> you could even stay in my hotel room. No, no, really? Yeah. Uh-oh. No, that's, that's Uh-oh. not good. Uh-oh. Uh-oh. I don't know yeah. about that. Hey, <laughs> you know what the, the crazy neighbors at it again said? What do you mean? She banged on our door the other day at one thirty-eight in the morning. No good. Bang, 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 bang. No good. No good. And my wife's ready to give her a throat punch. Yeah. Well, stop, stop being so loud when it's you have sex. She's, just, she's delusional, man. Everywhere we go, there's craziness. Every yeah. I moved away from sure. craziness yeah. only to get close to the crazy. You ever think your neighbors think you're crazy? You know what? I'm starting to wonder, sir. Yeah, that's right. Could, All right, so, so you quickly. Know, not for nothing. You're the only one that can talk more than me, and your memory is insane. <laughs> it's fine. You do. You have an insane memory, sports. I love it. I thought, well, thank you. So tell people when they go to your website, dbwins.com, give them the phone number, tell them what they could expect today, the next couple of days leading up to the Super Bowl, and more importantly, Danny, what are they going to get after next Sunday when football season is over? Well, we're going to focus on basketball. I have been the last couple of weeks. My advice to anybody on air, if they're not going to visit me at dbwins.com, look for good teams at home. For example, uh, for example, Memphis, minus two today. They're 10-1 and one at home. They're playing UCF, 2-2 two and two on the road. You know, it's a good spot for Memphis. Look for college especially. Good teams at home with a good record. Purdue, a lot of the smart money already is on Purdue over Michigan State. They won 13 in a row. But Purdue is 9-0 and oh at home. So look for teams at home, grabbing a little bit, laying a little bit, good records, but that all changes in March when you lose that home court advantage. Oh, well, that's right. The March Madness, you've got to do it from uh, different arenas around the country. Absolutely. Well, you know? thank you, Danny. We'll, uh, we'll talk again during the week, and uh, we'll certainly talk next Sunday, and I'm sure your show next Saturday night is going to be great. And, folks, uh, go back into the archives and check out Danny with the all-time great Randy Cross. On Inside the Numbers last night, as always, Danny B., excellent stuff. We love you. Thank you. Thanks, Sid. I'll be on that bus with you. Move over. <laughs> okay. Get there Wednesday know. afternoon. Quick, the calls here before I go to Tony Dungy. This is the guy that started the Sid Rosenberg fan club down in South Florida. He has since uh, put up the Bernie and Sid in the morning fan club. He's, he's been as loyal to me as anybody in my career. He's online, too, live from Riviera Beach, Florida. My good buddy, Gabriel he was named after my son, even though he's 30 years older than my son. Hello, Gabe. Good morning. How are you? Absolutely. I was named, I was named after your son in the future. That's what it was. <laughs> that was absolutely what it was. Right. Um, you know, Sid, for, for me, I, I love listening to you on Sundays. I, this is how I discovered you. It was a random Sunday in December down here in South Florida. I'm in my car. I'm driving to my dad's house. I'm desperately, desperately looking for something. And I, and I end up on this, with this voice, and I'm like, 
this is down here in South Florida? This guy sounds this guy sounds like he's from Brooklyn. Oh my god. It was like a ray of light coming out of the radio with angels singing, oh, god. beckoning. My God. Thank you. Thank you for Sid Rosenberg, yeah, God. Best. Now you and you had no idea at that time about my prior career at WFAN and my stuff here in New York. None of that, right? At that time, I did not know, and then oh. when I did the research, like, my this is this is a real radio guy. This is a real radio guy. <laughs> so we, we were blessed to have you down here. Now, you know, now now we're back in radio limbo without you. I know. Thank you. Thank you. But but uh, you know, two two reasons why I called. It's like you said. I believe you're the one who said two weeks ago. What can you count on? Death taxes and Patriots. Yeah. Yeah, and the, and the one and the one thing about this game I've noticed a lot of people are not talking about is the Patriots defense. Did they not beat two good quarterbacks on the way to the Super Bowl? They did. I mean, Mahomes figured him out in the second half last week. He put up thirty-one. That's a lot of points for one half. But certainly the first half they were amazing. And like you said, Gabe, all four quarters they did shut down Phil Rivers. No, they've been great. And uh, that Bill Belichick defense this time of year is usually pretty good. Now the the, the other reason why I call this because. This is the third anniversary of the Bernie and Sid show officially airing on WAC. That's right. Radio. Today. Gabe, you're ex- the anniversary. You're right. I- January 27th, 2016 was the very first ever Bernie and Sid midday show. And now three years later, we replaced Imus, better show, uh, doing the morning show. That's right. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> and, and one last thing before I go, folks. Those of you that are fans of Bernie and Sid, those of you that are fans of, of, Sid, of Sid Sports Sunday, you, you, whenever you're listening, if you're listening from your phone, you need to make sure your GPS is on. If you're listening from a tab, you need to make sure the GPS is on. The reason why is because of the streaming companies. They go back to WABC. They let them know who's listening, where they're listening from. They know that some guy in his mom's basement in Peshockton, Ohio, is listening, okay? <laughs> so make sure all that's on. Make sure you, su- you subscribe to Sid's podcast. Be a real fan. This I'm telling you, folks. Sooner or later, Bernie and Sid is going to be syndicated, and and I'm and I'm just going to be jumping for joy. I'm going to be running down the street like I won Powerball, butt naked. Okay. <laughs> All right. Sid, have a great love weekend. You too. Enjoy yourself, and love you and the family. Love you too. Thank you for everything, Gabriel. We will be syndicated, and uh, it'll be this year. That I can tell you. What date? How many markets? It's not like Donald Trump. That I can tell you. Uh, what date? How many markets? I can't tell you. But we will be syndicated this year. We'll take a short break. When we get back, he's a Hall of Famer. Uh, played in a Super Bowl with the Pittsburgh Steelers. Great coaching days with the Buccaneers and the Colts. And now does a terrific job alongside Mike Tirico and Rodney Harrison. Sunday nights on NBC. The really, really good Tony Dungy on Sid Sports Sunday. Right after these short messages. This segment was sponsored by dbwins.com. Opinions expressed are solely those of the host and dbwins.com and do not necessarily reflect those of WABC or Cumulus Media. This is Sid Sports Sunday, driven by Ramsey Mazda every Sunday, 77 WABC. Sid Sports Sunday, driven by Ramsey Mazda every Sunday. New York Sports and more, more. More 77 WABC and the free WABC radio app. Let's get out here with a W. You know, every now and then you meet somebody and you only got to meet them once and you know, I really like this guy. And everybody says that about Tony Dungy, you know what I mean? Tony was on with me and Bernie a couple of days ago, right here on 77 WABC on the morning show, and he was terrific. And then I saw Tony again, believe it or not, with Martha McCallum on Fox News, and he was great. But I've known Tony for years, of course, a, a terrific player, an amazing coach, guy that uh, is on NBC, of course, with my good buddy Rodney Harrison, a great author, and most importantly, just a great man. He, he really is, you know, for folks that don't know him, he comes off so nice and gentle on TV. That's him. That's Tony Dungy, a sweet God bearing man and an NFL great Hall of Famer joining us right here on Sid Sports Sunday. Coach Dungy, how are you, pal? Hey, I'm doing well, Sid. Uh, great to be with you again. 
Yes, it's great to have you back. You were so good a couple of days ago, and the book is out, The Soul of a Team, a modern-day fable for winning teamwork. You certainly know how to do that as a player and a coach. But before we get to the book, let's tackle, Tony, all the controversies that we dealt with this week in the NFL. Controversy one, Saints game, not one, not two, but you could have called three defensive penalties on one play. There's no flag, which was amazing. The fans are so upset that this is a real frivolous lawsuit, but they're actually suing the NFL, the Saints fans, very simply. Uh, Roger Goodell has the power to play the game over, to get to that point of the game and continue to play. Do you think it's worthy of that, or at the very least, an instant replay move in the future? No, I I really don't. Um, I, I just feel like we all saw it. We know it was a bad call. But this is not the first bad call in the history of sports. Uh, people are debating calls. You can go back a hundred years and debate bad calls. And this one was obvious, should have been called. The referees had a conference. One of those other officials should have said, you know what, that was interference. We've got to drop the flag. But it didn't happen. Uh, and so we've got to move on and, and go forward. And it's not like the Saints lost the game on that call. Okay, they kicked their field goal. Their defense had a chance to stop the Rams. They didn't stop the Rams. They won the coin toss. They had the ball. They threw an interception. So, yeah, you could say, well, they would have won the game, but for that call. But that wasn't the only thing that played into that game. So people just have to, to move forward. The Saints got to a Super Bowl with the same type of thing. They had a, a, a rough in the pass on Brett Favre that was just as obvious, yep. just as blatant on an interception. It didn't get called. You know what people did? They moved on. People in Minnesota are still upset about it. The people in New Orleans still celebrate their Super Bowl. That's sports. That's the human error of it. So, no, I I don't think we should go to these lengths and and lawsuits. It it just doesn't make sense to me. Okay. Now, you talk about, you know, the defense had a chance to stop them. Look, the Patriots defense did a great job in the first half against Patrick Mahomes in the other game. Then the kid figured them out put up 31 points on the Pats' defense in the second half. So I understand you don't want games going four hours, Tony, and, you know, there's too much, but it didn't seem fair to me that on a day where neither defense was very good in the second half, where Brady gets an opportunity and Mahomes doesn't. I'd almost rather, in the playoffs, at least give Mahomes a chance to score because they weren't stopping him either. Well, that's true, and that's the argument people can make. But now let's take it a step further. So Brady goes down, scores a touchdown. We say we need to give Mahomes a chance. He scores a touchdown. Then what happens? You know, yeah, you've got the point. same situation yep. again. Yep. Yep. And so you, then you end up doing what the colleges do, and they give each team the ball until someone wins. That game could go on forever in the NFL. And, uh, you know, I being a defensive guy, I feel like, hey, if we can't stop them from scoring a touchdown, we don't deserve to win. I just feel like, you know, this is the biggest game of the year, and the Rams are in, and I know they're happy in Los Angeles, but they're very upset in New Orleans, and even football fans around the country feel like the Saints got robbed. You know, the call on Tom Brady, that roughing call, where the guy didn't come close to his helmet. He hit him in the shoulder. It just seems... Like with a game of this magnitude, there's so much controversy around both teams' victories. It's almost, almost taking away from what should be the biggest matchup of the year. You feeling that? Well, it's going to take away from it for this week leading up to it. But I promise you, whoever wins the game next Sunday, no one will talk about these controversies again. All it will be is, a the Rams won their second Super Bowl or the the. Patriots won their sixth Super Bowl, and they'll go on from there. Um, It's happened before, you know. (laughs) Right, right, no, yep. Yeah, I'm a a big Minnesota Vikings fan. I went to the University of Minnesota, Dallas Cowboys, the Hail Mary. To this day, 40 years later, I still believe Drew Pearson pushed off, and it wasn't called. (laughs) He did. 40 years later. He he did. did. Oh, he absolutely did push off. Yes, yes. You know what? Does does anybody care at this point? Does anybody go back? No. No. It's one of those things that happened. And, you know, it's always going to be that way. There have been uh, hundreds of these calls, and we'll, we'll complain about it, and we'll say, you know, that's too bad, and we'll feel bad about it. 
But at the end of the day, we'll get over it and we'll celebrate the team that wins. No, you're right. I mean, the only guy that may care, though, is sitting down with me 10 o'clock on Friday morning in Atlanta. His name is Fran Tarkenton. He may care. Um, <laughs> yeah. oh, he'll definitely care, and he will tell you that he saw Drew Pearson push off. No doubt. The book again, Tony Dungy, The Soul of a Team, a modern-day fable for winning teamwork. And one of those Viking teams that you're a fan of, Tony, going to school in Minnesota, made those four Super Bowls. We know, of course, that um, – Kemp lost one, and Tarkenton lost three cap, I should say, Joe Cap, yes. and, and the great Bud Grant, who right up there with the great coaches that uh, came close, Marv Levy, those types of guys. Uh, but that was a great era for football, those early Super Bowls, and you got the opportunity to play, and I believe one of the greatest ever, Super Bowl Thirteen. we talked about this a couple of days ago, the Jackie Smith drop pass in the end zone from Roger Storback. Those Bradshaw Storback, Steeler Cowboy matchups, in my opinion, Tony, that was as good as football ever was. Oh, it was fantastic. You had uh, not as many teams. Um, guys didn't move. So that defense that we had, you had Hall of Famers who stayed there for years and years and years on the same team. There was no salary cap. There was no free agency. We had, I had nine Hall of Fame teammates. Wow. Uh, you know, and Dallas, it was the same thing. So you knew who you were going to play. You knew the plays they were going to run, and it was execution back and forth. Now that game, Super Bowl Thirteen, the Dallas players will tell you to this day there was a pass interference call on Lynn Swan. They'll say that was a bad call. Benny Barnes, they just tripped over each other's feet. You know, there, there's always to be those calls. <laughs> it was yeah. a bad you know, call. <laughs> and you know what? We aren't giving the trophy back. We aren't giving the rings back. <laughs> Hey, I have to get over it. No, you're right. Again, that's great that you can bring up these certain plays. Again, Coach Tony Dungy here on Sid Sports Sunday. You know, I know you know this, but most sports fans don't. Not only Tony Dungy, you an amazing coach and author, great TV personality, Super Bowl winner in the NFL, but you own a record that may never be broken. You're the only guy in the same game to make an interception and throw an interception. When you had to play quarterback, everybody else got hurt, yeah. right? Not the only guy to do it. Uh, it had been done way back when they played both ways. But the la- I'm the last person to do it. Once they started offense, defense gotcha. in the 60s, you right. know, nobody's right. done it since. But, uh, yeah, since they went to two platoon <laughs> football, <laughs> it hasn't been done. It was a crazy game. We're in Houston in the old Astrodome. Elvin Bethea, a great player. Sacked Terry Bradshaw in the first quarter, broke his wrist. Sacked Mike Kruzek in the third quarter, separated his shoulder. We didn't have any other quarterbacks. And uh, I had gotten an interception early in the game, went in and played the uh, the fourth quarter at quarterback. It doesn't happen very often anymore. You know, I would ask you this, though, then we'll get to your coaching days and then the book. Tom Brady, you just said it, has a chance to win his sixth Super Bowl. This is uh, now Super Bowl number, I believe, uh, 11 for the Pats as an organization. They did lose two early, one with Drew Bledsoe and one with um, Tony Eason and Steve Grogan. But those Steeler teams that you were a part of that won four Super Bowls, you mentioned the amount of Hall of Famers. I know, Tony, guys get so uncomfortable when they talk about, I can't compare different eras. Come on, sure you can. Those Steeler teams, that's not the best team ever in the history of the NFL? I'm biased because I played on on that team, but I I think they were. Yeah. Because you had great coaching staff that stayed together for a number of years. You had these players who stayed together. Um, the year that I got there, we had 10 defensive players in the Pro Bowl. And they all came back the next year. Wow. You know, um, the, the 1976 team that didn't win, we had some injuries. But that team went 27 quarters without giving up a touchdown. Jeez. You know, uh, it, it was just – it was – a talented, talented group. We started out as a defensive group and uh, smothering defense, and then they changed the rules to kind of counteract that. No bump after five yards, no head slaps, all these offense rules in. And Coach Knowles said, all right, we'll emphasize offense. We'll start throwing the ball. Mm-hmm. And we had two Hall of Fame receivers and a Hall of Fame quarterback. So, uh, yeah, I, I don't think from a talent standpoint, from an execution standpoint, it would have been tough uh, for somebody – in these days, to beat that team because you couldn't keep that amount of talent together on one team. And yet, yet, as we get ready for the Rams to play their second Super Bowl as the L.A. Rams, we know twice in St. Louis, as the L.A. Rams, 
Ray Malavese almost figured it out, Tony, almost. There they were, Vince Ferragamo, Lawrence McCutcheon, those group of guys, the young blood guys, they had the lead in the fourth quarter against the Steelers. They played them well, and they had two coaches. Uh, Bud Carson left our staff and went there to L.A. He knew us very well. Lionel Taylor was our receiver coach. He went to L.A. with Ray Malavese. So they had inside information <laughs> on how to play us. Right. And they hung in there for three quarters. But uh, e- eventually, you know, uh, that was that fourth Super Bowl win for the Steelers. And it was a, it was a great game, but that was a tremendous team. Yep. You know, you talk about inside information. You did such a great job, Tony, coaching the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Such a great job. Really made them a powerhouse uh, for the first time in the team's history. Now, you leave. You talk about inside information. John Gruden knew what Bill Callahan was going to do before Bill knew what he was going to do. And that was one of the reasons why the year after your Buccaneer team went on to win the Super Bowl under John Gruden. But you put together quite a squad there in that NFC championship game, which allowed the Rams to move on and take on the Tennessee Titans. Ironically, the last time the Super Bowl was in Atlanta, that game, the Bernard Manuel yeah. play, that was a tremendous game. It was a great game. And uh, that's a great example of what we've been talking about with this controversy. Everybody thinks replay is going to solve everything. Bert Emanuel caught a ball to give us a chance to go into the winning touchdown. They called it complete on the field. Replay stepped in, called it incomplete. Well, we know now it should have been a completed pass. Uh, we can look back, and Tampa fans are still upset about that. Yep. But my take to the team was we should have won the game 6-5. to five. If we did yep. our job, we wouldn't have had that drive to have to score a touchdown. Uh, so we've got to come back the next year and, you know, and be better. We, we didn't get it done, but eventually they did. They came back and won the Super Bowl three years later. And what a job you did after that with the Colts, of course, uh, Tony, Peyton, Manning. And I spent 15 years down in Miami doing morning shows. So I was actually at that stadium earlier in the day. <laughs> oh, God. And the, you, the rain, huh? Oh, my God. The weather you guys had down in Miami. But listen. A guy stepped up, you know, Dominic Rhodes behind Joseph Adai has a big game. And I know we remember Prince performing at halftime in the rain. But let's face it, Tony, Peyton Manning gets his first championship. Uh, You guys had a phenomenal team. You get your first as a head coach. So it may have been raining in Miami, Tony Dungy, but it was sunny for you, wasn't it? (laughs) It was. It was was a crazy night and a lot of turnovers with the weather and everything. But... Uh, that was a fantastic feeling, and to realize that we had brought a championship to Indiana and the people there, uh, really a fulfilling night for me. And what about Peyton Manning when you when you, you talk about the, now you had him, so you're going to be biased, and you won a Super Bowl for you, I get all that, but when you start talking about the hierarchy of greatest quarterbacks of all time, you you got to put him top five. Where would you put him? I'd put him at the top for what he did, and he orchestrated things. Our offense was in his hands. There was no huddle. He was making the calls on the field. Uh, he was sensational. And, you know, it is hard to compare teams and players. I, I think Troy Aikman, you know, had Jimmy Johnson stayed in Dallas, Troy Aikman might have won six or seven Super Bowls. Yep. Uh, Terry Bradshaw was fantastic for us. Roger Staubach was difficult to play against. John Elway was difficult to play against. Who was the best? It's really hard to say, but uh, Peyton, I was around him for, for seven years. I saw what he did, how he prepared, how he led our team, and he did as much as any quarterback I've ever seen or been around. No question. I, I also thought Dan Marino was a phenomenal quarterback. Never won. Marino was fantastic. So good. You know, uh, but with Peyton Manning, you talk about his smarts. Aren't you talking about this, Tony? And it, it should be talked about more because you're a thousand percent right. I'm friends with every broadcaster in the business. I love them all. I know them all. They're good guys. But a word like cerebral, we'll throw that around for a Peyton Manning or most white quarterbacks. You very rarely, if ever, hear that word cerebral used to describe a black quarterback. You've made that point. You made it on Fox News a couple of nights ago. You are one thousand percent correct. Why is that the case? I don't know exactly why. I don't think it's conscious. I don't think it's intentional, but it happens. I made the point several times this year in talking about Patrick Mahomes. I've been amazed at this kid, 23 years old, first year as a starter. Yes, he makes some unbelievable throws and the strong arm and cross field and 
all of that. That that's true. But this this young man has a grasp of the game. Andy Reid's offense is complex. He's making the right decisions. We were at the game against the Colts, and he's using the cadence. He's checking off, getting them into the right audible. He's making good decisions. And I'm saying, does anybody want to talk about that? How rare is that in a 23-year-old? Yep. Uh, and I don't think it was intentional. It was just that everybody gets wowed by, oh, the, the sidearm throw and the 70-yard pass. Uh, but, but, yeah, I, I think it's just something that needs to be pointed out. I think it's fair. The soul of a team is the name of the book, a modern day fable for winning teamwork. Uh, and we'll close with this, coach. What's great about this book is, is it's not just for football. Uh, this applies to my job in radio. This applies to a manager at a restaurant. Yeah. Uh, basically this book applies to anybody who's got to work in and around people, but are looking to be successful. Exactly. How do you put a group together? to uh, go about achieving a goal and get everybody to work together. That can be a family, it can be a business, it can be a sports team, uh, it can be any entity. And uh, I think there's going to be some good tips for people in, in the book, and I hope they read it and enjoy it. Fantastic book we have, and uh, we're happy for you, Hall of Famer, author, player, coach uh wonderful on nbc as well tony and just an all-around great guy i look forward to seeing you in atlanta next week and thanks for not once but twice spending time with me this <laughs> week you're terrific thank you buddy it was a lot of fun sid thank you i'll see you down in atlanta looking forward to it the great tony dungy here on sid sports sunday we'll take a short break back right after these short messages WABC. Spectacular guests. Spectacular picks. Spectacular sports. Spectacular stories. Sid Sports Sunday. Driven by Ramsey Mazda. Spectacular. 77 WABC. Spectacular. Four platforms next week. Just so you know, Bernie and Sid in the morning. Live Thursday and Friday from the Super Bowl. Sid Sports Sunday, live from Atlanta, from the Super Bowl. We're also going to do a Facebook Live. So, for example, if Dan Marino sits down with me and, and Bernie or, or me or John Elway or who knows who, that'll be, uh, you can watch that on Facebook Live. And finally, I am going to do this weekend the Sid Uncensored Super Bowl 53 podcast. So you can, uh, like, I'm going to get Bill Sims to say the F word, stuff like that. So it's uncensored. You know, it's just going to be F this and screw that and. Whatever. So you get four different platforms. If you're really like me, you'll be really nauseous by, uh, by next Sunday. Just sick to your stomach. Here is, uh, we spoke to Gabe from Riviera Beach earlier today. He started all the fan clubs. Not fair to me, if I didn't mention this, he has a, a partner in crime. She's been the biggest fan and now is a dear friend of my whole family, Stephanie Perales, live from Orlando. She listens down in Florida to these shows every day. Good morning, Stephanie. How are you, sweetheart? Good morning from rainy Pro Bowl Sunday. Are you actually going to the Pro Bowl? Yes, in the pouring rain. Now, you're a diehard Jet fan. You're, and I know a lot of big-time Jet fans. Joe Beningo, Evan Roberts, Boomer, guys like um, even a few down in Florida. But you're, you're the biggest Jet fan I know. Not too many Jets in Orlando today, Steph. Well, I just would like to... Uh, Tell the NFL, because we know all those people at the NFL offices up there in New York City listen to your show. Of course. That yesterday at the NFL experience, they were selling no Jamal Adams or any Jet merchandise at the NFL Pro Shop. Yeah, that's not right. So I just want to tell you, NFL, you suck. <laughs> so you had a chance to meet uh, Dallas Cowboys quarterback Dak Prescott, and he, last day, uh, he made a lasting impression on you, didn't he? Well, he was very nice to the kids and Ezekiel Elliott and Jamal Adams. They were all super nice, and um, it was just great to see like how like sincere and genuine they yep. were with the kids. So for all of you that may be going to the Pro Bowl down here today, bring your raincoat. Oh, boy. And your jackets, because it's 50 degrees and rainy oh all my day God. long. Sounds terrible. Um, all right, well, listen, good news for you. Anytime we do a Super Bowl, I had so many people I went to Super Bowls with 
FANDs, obviously. Uh, guys like Victor Bermudez, when I worked at WQAM in Miami. Guys like Andy King, that dick, when I worked at 790 The Ticket. But certainly a couple of very memorable uh, Super Bowls with your two favorites, Stephanie, Steve Zemak and Eric Langell at 640 Sports. And live tomorrow morning with memories of the Super Bowl in New Orleans between the Ravens and the 49ers with me and Bernie at 740. The aforementioned Eric Langell on the Bernie and Sid Show. So. Well, I may have to just turn the radio off. <laughs> I thought you guys made up. No, no. Eric Regelt, no. Nah. He just, he just got road, you know, roid rage. Yeah, he did have but some he, of that, yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. But awesome. we love him. But well, we, it would be cool if you could get the guy, the bathroom attendant. Leroy Covington. Yeah, we can't find them. Yeah, we tried. We tried. I know. So, hey, best, best to Ralph. I love you. Enjoy the Pro Bowl today. And it's always great to hear from you, Stephanie. Thank you for all the years. Of your friendship and loyalty. Thank you. Love you and the family. Bye. Love you, too. Line one is, I've uh, been holding for a while. Larry, he's in the Bronx today. Good morning, Larry. Sydney, Arthur Montre. Hello. Only you, could, only you could come up with Earl Cooper and not Earl Campbell. I love it. Isn't that great? I'm hooked, on the, I'm hooked on the Bernie and Sid show. I'm going to let you know. One day I'll call you guys. I'll let you guys are the, listen, folks. They're the funniest guys. Radio, TV, everything, you're just a natural when it comes to that. I know there are guys who bet on the game. They would love to put the referee on one of those medieval stretching racks. I understand that. <laughs> right. And I know it's the, 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 the old guys of, uh, you know, just let them play. Yeah, just let them play. Let them play like that. I would send in my dirtiest plays. That's like the in the neighborhood playing second base. The guy right. doesn't touch second base. Ever. And he's, and he's, and he's out. Come on. Get out. He's safe. He doesn't touch the base. Right. But Sid, I'm, I really got to tell you, man. I love your show. This is where you both. I love you talking with Bernie. You guys are funny as any. You guys are funny as hell. Let me tell you. But I love you with sports, man. Thank and you. And I'm glad you're back. Welcome home, kid. Folks, this is the Sid Sports Machine. This man is a sports beast. You can use it as a commercial. I don't care. Thank you, Larry. You're the man. That's a great phone call. Hey, we got to end it. Thank you, Larry. We'll end it this way. Talking about WABC, the midday show, Curtis Sliwa and uh, Juliet's been sitting in for a couple of weeks. Juliet Hardy doing a terrific job. Uh, Curtis is a part of this show, too. Every week he cuts this, what does he call this, Gunsy, like the spectacular sports. He tried to get the alliteration in. I think he did. But what's it called? A mess. What is it? Some sort of mess. That it's a does. mess. Okay, perfect. No, it's actually very, very good and entertaining, as he always is. We're going to close it up with my man Curtis Sliwa. This is Curtis Sliwa's Super Sports Spectacular on Sid Sports Sunday, powered by Ramsey Mazda. You got to be kidding. Mike Messina, Hall of Fame pitcher when you had Kurt Schilling on the ballot? As much as I hate, loathe, despise Kurt Schilling, the Yankee killer, with the stigmata on his sock, breaking the curse, the Babe Ruth curse, destroying us with the Arizona Diamondbacks. Kurt Schilling, 10 times better than Mike Messina. When crunch time came for the Yankees, did they go to Messina? No. They went to Pettit or Clemens. Kurt Schilling should be in the Hall of Fame. Forget the politics. And A-Royd weighs in, a Rod and says, oh, Barry Bonds, Roger Clemens should be in. Of course, because you want steroid freaks to be in the Hall of Fame, thinking it's going to pave the way for you. Guess what? Keep chasing Jenny round the block. Baby got back Jennifer Lopez. You ain't getting into the Hall of Fame, a Royd. Excellent job, Curtis. Thank you with that. Thank you. Let's uh, thank everybody today. Bruce uh, Clayton usually runs the board and does a fantastic job, but today he was training Izzy Richardson, Isaiah, who was uh, flawless. Absolutely perfect. So two big weeks in a row, one from producing the show to running the show. And great, of course, to have my main man, Mike Gunzelman, back. No better producer in sports today. Want to thank our guests, Hall of Famer Tony Dungy, Danny B., Bruce Rosenberg. Check it out. You want a hotel room in Atlanta? Go to hotelplanner.com. And, of course, Curtis Sliwa. Gunzy, big show next week, baby. You ready? Oh, what you know, what you know about it. Whatever that means. Anyway, I'll talk to you again tomorrow morning at 6 a.m. with Bernard McGurk on the burn.